By excluding the military, which has directly maintained ZNUPF in power since 2000, from his shaky intelligence-driven presidential election campaign, President Emerson Unengogwa has taken a significant political risk. According to state security sources, according to the news hawks, Unengogwa is now collaborating with the dreaded state security organization, the shadowy political dark arts organization Forever Associate Zimbabwe Force, which is run by the Central Intelligence Organization CIO. He had previously been the state security minister during the 1980s, and that experience hardened him into a ruthless security official who prefers to work in secret. Umningogwa's campaign is being aggressively led by FOS, which is leading an intelligence operation on elections, after the army, which put him in power through the coup that deposed the late former president Robert Mugabe in November 2017, was forced out amid betrayal and hostility. According to sources, if Umningogwa wins, the army will essentially be pushed back to the barracks because the CIO will now be in charge of overseeing the electoral process and elections in place of the military. According to intelligence sources, this runs the risk of escalating tensions within the security institutions, which could then lead to a political crisis. The sources go on to say that this occurs in the context of Umningogwa's ongoing behind-the-scenes effort to disengage the military from civilian government affairs in order to free himself from its constraints and establish firmer control over the levers of state power. Umning Gogwa has been squabbling with his deputy Constantino Chiwenga, who carried out the coup over the reins of political and state power. Due to this, there is now a delicate and dangerous political game of military legitimacy. The balance of power initially favored Chiwenga, but as he took control, Umning Gogwa launched a daring wave of purges of the top army commanders who had orchestrated the coup, posting some of them as ambassadors abroad and shunning others. The leaders were allies of Chiwenga. Political analysts claim that the role of contingency in politics, particularly death, helped his ruthless purges, which also targeted the CIO and police. Umningogwa ousted the army commanders who put him in power amid political brinksmanship with Chiwenga that followed the coup. Some people passed away eerily. Chiwenga also came dangerously close to passing away before the Chinese intervened to save him. Mary Mubewa's arm was amputated as a result of the incident, and she was forbidden from seeing their children and they eventually divorced. The army is being pushed back to the barracks. According to intelligence sources, so that Umningogwa can maintain tighter control rather than demilitarizing state institutions and politics, which could be politically fatal for him and bring down his government. This became a necessity for Umningogwa and a strategy for survival, especially after Chiwenga nearly proclaimed a state of emergency in January 2019 while the president was traveling in Russia and other Eastern European nations. This can be found in Eddie Cross, Umningogwa's advisor biography. S. Emerson Dambuzo Umningogwa's book, A Life of Sacrifice, stops short of accusing Chiwenga of planning to stage a coup in 2019. When the country was thrown into days of political unrest and fear, with the political environment pregnant with military maneuvers and teetering on the verge of another coup. The militarization of state institutions in Zimbabwe has now far-reaching effects on other crucial institutions such as the judiciary, state-owned media, and the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, which oversees elections in addition to state security agencies. Both the militarization of some state institutions and the enmeshing of the ruling ZNU-PF with the state are examples of this. Following the coup, the military assumed the role of judge and kingmaker, continuing to ignore the electoral processes while adhering to the bare minimum of constitutional and normative provisions in order to maintain multilateral, continental, Southern African Development Community and African Union support, including at the United Nations. According to sources, Umningogwa's actions are not intended to address the military's nefarious politicization in the context of Zimbabwe's militarization of politics, which dates back to the liberation struggle, but rather to checkmate Chiwenga and maintain power. One source claimed Umningogwa wants the army back to the barracks to protect himself and to prove his weak government. The problem is serious because, for example, soldiers are no longer permitted to use public transportation or to roam the streets in military car. They are obligated to conduct themselves in accordance with military regulations. According to a CIO internal assessment on which the Newshawks was briefed, Umningogwa made the decision to exclude the army from the elections for three main reasons. It is a big risk that could benefit him politically but also motivate the military to respond. 
First off, Unemgogwa is fighting back against the army, which is still heavily influenced by Chiwenga and is suspected of planning a Bora Musengo sabotage campaign similar to the one that resulted in Mugabe's shocking loss to the late founding leader of the opposition MDC. Morgan Svengerai, in the first round of voting in 2008. In order to secure his own mandate through FAS, he is also attempting to detach from and win himself from the army, which propelled him to power through the coup. According to sources, Umnim Gogwa is tired of Chiwenga and the armies, we put you there, blackmail and control tactics. Thirdly, the president wants to force the army back to the barracks and remove them from the political arena after dismantling the coup coalition that put him in power. The intelligence briefing provides clarity and insight on the issue that will continue long beyond the polls and could ultimately determine Umnim Gogwa's future even if he wins. Since the founding of the Zimbabwean state in April 1980, the security establishment has grown to be a highly politicized organization that supports the ruling party and executive, ultimately acting as an alternative to electoral legitimacy and setting them at war with the populace. In Zimbabwe, the administration and military have strong ties to patronage politics. Despite the constitution forbidding military engagement in politics, the army's influence now extends to the mining, media, healthcare, and even the election commission. Umning Gogwa wants to remove these tendrils in order to maintain power.